But first, a statement and a question. We've seen a dramatic change in America's attitudes toward gay rights just in the last few years. Here's the question. How much has the media influenced that change? Let's back up a moment and look at what happened just this week, another landmark week for gay rights. The, government of, the governor of Arizona vetoed a bill that would have given businesses the legal grounds to deny service to gay people. In Texas, a federal judge struck down that state's ban on gay marriage. And in Kentucky, a district judge said the state must recognize gay marriages that were performed in states where they are legal. Of course, these battles all across the country are far from over. But just look at how much has changed. Republicans Mitt Romney, John McCain, and even some Fox News stars all spoke out against the Arizona bill. So how much of a role did we in the media play here? Look at this research conducted by the Pew Research Center last summer around the gay marriage debate. It found that stories emphasizing support for gay marriage were five times as common as stories emphasizing opposition. So is the media coverage of this issue shaping America's changing attitudes, or is it merely reflecting those changes that are happening anyway? Joining me to hash this out is Ben Shapiro, a conservative columnist and editor-at-large for Breitbart.com, and Thomas Frank, the author of What's the Matter with Kansas, and the brand new columnist for the liberal website Salon. Thank you both for joining me. Sure thing. And thanks so much. Thomas, this cuts right to the heart of what some people have complained about for decades, the idea that the media is biased in favor of liberals. Is that the case here? And what else do you think uh, accounts for the changing attitudes we've seen in all of the polling uh, in this country in recent years? Well, you know, I've, I've always been a big uh, doubter of the, the, uh, the liberal bias critique, although, you know, maybe this issue is different. But if you go back and look at uh, the long history of the bias critique, it goes back to, you know, we know when it started, Spiro Agnew back in 1969, basically, you know, invented this uh, as a way of, of getting back at the news media of the day that was, uh, you know, that he thought was opposing the Vietnam War and that sort of thing. Uh, and they, and it's, you know, it's, it's gone on and on and on over the years. And the, the hilarious thing is that the media is objectively much less liberal today <laughs> than it was then after years and years mm. and years of this stuff. But, you know, you, you, it, this is a very interesting question. Does the media reflect or does it cause, you know, and people debate this all the time in sociology and history, all sorts of other di disciplines. I used to argue about it myself. Ben, where do you stand on this? Do you feel that the press, either responsibly or irresponsibly, encourages acceptance of gay marriage and, and laws that uh, encourage gay rights? As far as the actual bias of the media, whether it's reflective or whether it's generative, the fact is that it reflects L.A. and it reflects New York and it generates, and it generates feeling elsewhere. I mean, the people tend to reflect the situations in which they live. The media is largely based in coastal large cities, liberal cities, and, and therefore their bias is, is reflective of those cities while changing the rest of the country. Is the press in this case an enemy of religious freedom then? Uh, because we saw so much criticism of this bill from reporters and from commentators and from corporate interests. Absolutely. The press is absolutely an, an opponent of religious freedom because the, the press believes uh, that essentially religious individuals should be forced to abide by whatever the press's standards of morality are, and the press is happy to see government enforce those standards of morality. You've seen people like Tony Kornheiser on ESPN suggest that this law would force people, gays in the state of Arizona, to wear yellow stars, or that gays and lesbians in the state of Arizona wouldn't be able to attend NFL football games. I mean, this kind of nonsense has nothing to do with the law as written, and it's specifically de designated to create the perception that the American people are a bunch of pitchfork and torch willing religious bigots who are looking to crowbar gay people in the streets. Well, it doesn't sound like anything like the America I know, but uh, hyperbole is common in the press, is it not? I mean, we hear hyperbole every day. Oh, hell, I deal in that stuff. <laughs> that's what I do, man. <laughs> can, uh, can I, can well, I just take... there's commentary, and then there's the news media. Yeah, that's right. And those are two different things. The, uh, can, I, can I just take a step back here? I'm from Kansas, and my, and, and my, the, the thing that got me writing What's the Matter with Kansas, in fact, was when they had this debate over the theory of evolution in the state of Kansas. And the media all over the world went absolutely berserk, right, making fun of Kansas. It's a replay of the uh, the monkey trial down in Tennessee, you know, back in the 1920s, and it was a, you know it was a classic media set piece, and everybody was laughing at Kansas, and um, and then the you know the uh, cons local conservatives sort of struck back and saying yes, but they didn't describe what we were doing precisely to the letter. They didn't get it exactly right. And, you know, they had a point, but in the in the the, the grand scheme of things, the uh, the media had that story right, and I think they have this one right as well. Sorry, Thomas just admitted that the media is biased and skews the story, but in general they have the story right. So please explain to me how a law that doesn't actually mention homosexuality is specifically about allowing restaurants to now have a right that trumps federal law, which, the, which this clearly does not, 
and how this law is going to allow get restaurants to randomly throw gay people out of their businesses in a way that they, they weren't able to before in the state of Arizona. Please explain that to me. Well, the, and how that's you know, it, it's actually not a law. It, it got vetoed. I don't know if you heard about this. A bill, correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I didn't read that one, but I did read the, the, the bill in Kansas, you know. The actual law itself, the proposal itself, the bill that, that got vetoed the other day, and they, they had one in Kansas, and they had, they had them in a bunch of other states. That's the, you know, the really interesting thing. Where did this come from? Who, uh, you know, who developed it? That sort of thing. And, and it, you know, and it, was, it was sort of, my opinion is that it was all sort of ginned up as a kind of, you know, as a kind of culture war set piece to rally the troops, you know, get something for people to, to, to feel persecuted about. Uh, get the get the voters, uh, you know, uh, worked up about about the, the onslaught of, of, you know, liberals and the trial lawyers and the outside judges and that kind of thing. Mm. And then falling back on, on liberal bias is just trying to salvage, you know, a, a game that's been lost, basically, in my opinion. Ben, when you come on television, when you write columns, uh, do, do you feel that, that you are being uh, persecuted or do you feel that you are being, um, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, put in an uncomfortable position because everybody else seems to uh, believe uh, the opposite of what you believe? Listen, I'm happy to be in liberal areas. I've spent my entire life in, uh, life in Los Angeles and Cambridge, Massachusetts. I like being in liberal areas. I like duking it out. But there's no question that the media is, is biased to the left. And there's also no question that the media is very much in favor of fascistic government that gets to control what religious people do with their, with their private businesses. I mean, and, and do, I, do I feel persecuted in that way? Well, let's see. If the government decides that it can tell me to violate my own religious precepts because the government has a, a greater good that it is attempting to pursue without evidence that that, that that greater good is actually a necessity. I mean, anybody who compares the plight of 2014 gays to 1960s blacks is absurd. If, if, then certainly I feel persecuted, but that's as a Fine. religious citizen, not as a commentator. Thank God we still have freedom of speech. And listen, I'm happy for you to be on the air, Brian. I'm happy you, for you to be on the air, Thomas. I just think there are more people like you than there are people like me. You awesome. mean in the press? You, that would be that would be the craziest well, thing in the world. I, I'm I'm always the, the the odd man out. I mean, the, if if. You know, the day that I, yeah, well, right I, now, I, no, I, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't go down this road, but but I have spent my entire life having, you know, extremely unpopular, uh, unpopular views and popular opinions. And and I agree. Thank God for the freedom of the press. I mean, this is, you know, that's a, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. I'm actually not even, you know, on the side that you, you probably think I'm on. But as far as, you know, being on the defense, being from the right on, on, a, uh, on a left network like CNN, sure, of course I'm on the defensive. And I go in and game planning for it. I mean, I, it's, it's not the same thing as going on Fox News, which obviously leans to the right. I mean, the, the, there are, and, tell, and that's Tell okay. me about how you that, plan but, for it. I'm curious because we're on, you know, the most meta show on CNN. How do you plan for it? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I do is I assume that I'm going to get a certain set of questions from, from folks like you, Brian, that I generally do get. And uh, with, with, with all the veiled implications therein, don't you feel persecuted when you go on a leftist network? The implication, of course, being that I see myself as a victim. Don't you feel like when you come on a leftist network and you're being attacked that, that maybe it's because, you know, you're just a little bit intolerant? These are usually the way these conversations go. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad, Brian, that you haven't done all of those things. You've done some of them. But, you know, of course, when I go in, I'd be <laughs> foolish not to actually think about the questions I'm going to be asked before doing so. And of course, you know, I got to say here, CNN does strive to be nonpartisan. I understand you feel it doesn't succeed at that all the time, but at least it tries. Uh, ben Shapiro, Thomas Frank, thank you both for joining me for this one. Yeah, sure thing. Hey, thanks so much.